First of all, hey guys, welcome to our channel. This is Two Dudes. Two Dudes. Two Dudes. Astronomy. We don't claim to be experts. We're just basically buying uh, the cheaper end stuff to kind of see what you can see because there's not a lot of channels out there that actually buy the product and show you what you can see. So, I mean, you can do the review and see like the quality of it. You know, like today we have a Celestron product. Um, this is not sponsored by them, but Celestron, if you want to sponsor us, you know where to find us. Um, but basically, the number one thing that we kept asking ourselves when we're looking for a product is, what can we see? Right? Yeah. Isn't that basically what you want to know? Is yeah. what can you see? Yeah. Not the focal length and all that stuff, because we're not nerds yet as far as that goes, as far as what's important and everything. Basically, when you're first starting out like us, you just want to know what can you see. So um, with this channel, we're just trying to help you guys and show you what we can see. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is you can see we have a couple of different things here. Um, so we have the Celestron Skymaster 25 by 70 binoculars. So um, we'll actually have links to all this stuff. So if you guys are interested um, in getting any of this for yourself after kind of seeing what you can see with it, um, we'll just put it in the link below. Um, so we'll go ahead and start with the uh, binoculars and then we'll kind of show you what else we got with it. You can see this. Skymaster 25 by 70. Um, actually comes in a really, really nice box. Like, really, really nicely painted. Like, when we, when we took it out of the cardboard box, we were actually pretty surprised at how, uh, how nice the box actually was. So let's go ahead and open her up. So we got the binoculars, owner's manual. Owner's manual for later. <laughs> when you can't figure something out, that's when you look at it. Mm -hmm. so, comes with this nice bag. Oh, use that back for something. Yeah, probably to hold the binoculars. Okay. Alright, so... Alright guys, so it actually comes with... Yeah, so look, this actually comes with a adapter for a tripod. So basically these things are actually pretty heavy, so holding them up, obviously keeping it still and uh, not losing your arms while doing it. So we've actually ordered one because we didn't know that it came with one. So maybe we'll actually just do a review of like the one that it comes with and then the Celestron one, unless they're the exact same. They're girthy. <laughs> <laughs> they look a lot smaller like on the pictures, but when you actually get them, they're, they're quite large. Oh, there they are. That's that's for size, like huge. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and get some close-ups and insert them here. What you what you kind of get with this? So it actually comes with a little soft cover over the back. Um, obviously, two over the front. You guys are looking good out there for sure. They looking good? <laughs> they looking? How are they looking out there? Anyway, you guys are looking good out there. This is our first video. Like, comment, subscribe. Smash that subscribe button because we're just getting started. So anyway, um, out of the box, looks pretty nice um, as far as um, construction. They are kind of heavy. Might have to get a scale out and then we can weigh them for you. Kind of show you what the weight is on them. Um, obviously it's not dark outside yet, so later tonight we're actually gonna, um, try to shoot our first video and kind of show you guys um, what you can see and we'll do that in the same video. So it's gonna be quick for you, but we're gonna have to wait a couple hours to actually use these things. How are we gonna show you what we're gonna see through these things is the main thing, right? 
So basically, what you need to be able to do that is one of these. So this is a smartphone adapter. And what does this do? So when you put that on there, um, you can take pictures of what you can see. So this connects to, so basically you can put your phone. Yeah. This thing is substantial, it's like all metal. Yeah, so basically what you do is you would put your phone in here and then you can adjust this left and right and however big your phone is. Um, and then this would actually go on the lens of the tele, or on the um, binocular. So you'd actually put this in here, tighten it down and then adjust your phone, like this rather. So you'd adjust your phone so when it's in there you can actually see what uh, the binoculars are seeing. So that will kind of give you guys a good idea of what um, we can see with these. We actually want to make a couple of videos with this. We don't want to just make one because I don't think we'll be able to find everything that we want to be able to see with the binoculars. So we'll probably end up making a couple of these videos um, without the review, just more of what we can see um, with a mountain in the sky. And then obviously different times of year you'd see different things. We're not experts of navigating the sky yet, are we? No, we're not. <laughs> but. I'm sure we'll be able to find the moon later. Yeah. Unless it's not up. We don't even know if the moon's gonna be up. We do know it's not supposed to be cloudy. So, clear skies. All right guys, we cleaned off the counter because we don't have enough room for this next one. Um, like we were saying before, these things get heavy, shaky, and if you're holding them up, trying to look at things forever. And also when we put you guys outside to actually see what we can see, um, we don't really don't want you guys shaking as much as possible. Probably still gonna happen, but Let's try to limit that. So, what do we got? Tripod? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely gonna need it. Probably not even gonna fit in this frame, but let's go ahead and try to unbox it here on the counter. If we have to move, you know, because I think this thing goes up to like 72 inches high. Which, so, let's just go ahead and open it. And this is the Victive. Victive. I think that's. I think that's... they pronounce it Victive. I think it's different, you know? Yeah. Let us know in the comments. Also in the comments, what do you guys want us to try and see? Like, what are you guys trying to see that, um, that what you would be interested in seeing? So like, if it was something that these binoculars could see that would make you want to buy it, what would you want to see? So how does this connect to the binoculars, you might be asking? So on the binoculars, right here, there's this little cap. You just unscrew it. And then underneath there is your um, adapter. So you wanna go ahead and take your adapter, the one that we just barely got. For the sake of the video, let's just use the one that came with it, just in case you guys don't wanna um, you guys don't want to buy the extra one because I know it was like, it's only like 10 bucks, but all right. So like I said, you just take the cap off and, uh, just want to put this right here. These screws right in. I don't know if you can see that. Don't over tighten it, you know, nothing. You want to make sure it's snug, but not, not too much. So basically screws on right there so then that way um you see at the bottom has this the regular i'm guessing it's probably just the common thread for um, cameras so let's see moment of truth success all right so yeah that's that's how it connects on um it feels, feels pretty stable, so um, I'll go ahead and show you how it connects onto the tripod, what kind of... Alright guys, we're back. We basically had to go into the uh, other room where we would actually have more room. So here's the setup. You got your binoculars, the eyepiece, which you guys will be riding on later. Um, and then the attachment for the camera to go on the tripod. So we'll just show you how this actually goes on here. Um, just so you guys 
can kind of see because I had these questions, I had no idea. So simply just like a camera would, I assume. Walks in. And we're, we're, we're pretty much... All right, guys, so we got him out here on the uh, tripod again. It's actually like a week later. We've been trying to see different things. Um, as far as as far as the uh, spotting goes, it's kind of difficult, ain't it? Trying to find things without being able to... Yeah, if you had one of those computer things where you could just type it in and then it would just find it for you. Yeah, so you'd kind of agree that... Being newbies, it's kind of hard finding things to look at. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we're actually going to try again tonight. Find something else. Um, try to show you guys what pictures we can actually see. Um, honestly, as far as seeing... Seeing with that attachment... Um, it's very difficult. So, we're going to do our best to show you what we can see with these things. And actually, with our next video, we got a little sneak peek. Oh. That'll be our next project. Um, as you guys can see, we got another telescope we're gonna be uh, showing you guys. It's actually an older one, but we're gonna do some upgrades, kind of maybe even show you guys how to do it as we learn how. Um, but that'll be from the next video. So stay tuned, we'll show you what we can see with the binoculars the best that we can, and then um, I'm sure we're gonna continue to make other videos with them. But um, all right, we're gonna start seeing if we can find anything else with binoculars and the other scope that we'll be showing you in the next video. So stick around. All right, guys, as you can kind of see, it's uh, super, any little, like, even breathing on the uh, binoculars makes it shake. So we're trying to be as cool, like, as still as we can. As you can see, you can still see, this is Jupiter. Um, you can actually see four of the moons um, on here. It kind of looks like you can only see three, and it kind of looks pretty blurry. It's actually better looking in real life than what you see here um but as far as being able to see jupiter you can't see jupiter and four of its moons with the binoculars and um, we'll see if we can get some pictures of it but man it is really hard to get pictures with so um so yeah that's kind of what you can see with jupiter so let's see what what else we can find All right, hey guys, so we just wanted to give you a little update on uh, what we could actually see. Unfortunately, with the camera, with us like a phone camera, there's not a lot that we could actually take pictures of. It's just too faint, but there's actually a lot you could still see. So um, let's kind of go over what we could see. So Connor here's got the list. Yeah. What's the first thing we looked at that we so, could see? We could see in the Andromeda Galaxy. And then how well could you, how well do you think you uh, could see the Andromeda Galaxy for a pair of binoculars? I've remembered it and like... Is it pretty impressive it, or is it okay? Or it's what? pretty impressive just because it's binoculars. Yeah, just for binoculars, yeah. but it's, it's still kind of fuzzy. Looks like a, like, looks kind of like a foggy cloud with like a tiny bright spot. Uh, the best way I could describe it. It has a bright spot in the middle and then you could just barely see some stars around it. But you can definitely see it, so that's one yeah. thing that you could see. What's another thing we can see? Um, the M8, which is aka Lagoon Nebula. The Lagoon Nebula. Yeah, we could actually see that one pretty good. That's like a... You can see some, like, faint clouds around the group of stars, but um, just the group of stars in itself looks pretty pretty cool for binoculars. Yeah. So that, that was actually pretty impressive. And these are actually pretty easy to find if you just kind of... You just get sky map download it and uh kind of points you right in the right direction where the other things we have a couple that we wrote down uh -huh. we also found the wild duck cluster the wild duck cluster it looks a lot like the hercules cluster but like bigger but bigger yeah it looks pretty cool um as far as like super detail you can definitely see there's a group of stars um you can see a little bit of the individual stars that make up the Mm -hmm. That'd be Spike, sorry about that. He mm -hmm. wants to say hi. But um, basically you can see, um, just looks like a nice group of stars. Pretty bright, mm -hmm. pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And then what was the last thing we looked at? That... Um, I think it's called Capella. Yeah, so the Capella star. Um, basically you can see that with your naked eye. Um, it flashes like multiple different colors just depending on the time of year I'm guessing. 
um, just from what we've seen, but through the binoculars, it looks looks awesome. Same with Antares. Um, that's like a reddish star you can see, um, kind of over below Jupiter. That actually looks really cool too through the um, binoculars. So as far as what we can see, those are the things that we've been able to find. Um, we're still new at this, so we're going to continue to like mix more videos of the binoculars and what you can see, but it's basically just going to be us telling you because we can't show you because the camera doesn't pick it up. Um, so actually for our ne next videos on our next telescopes, we're actually going to be buying a camera that goes into the telescope. So that way you can see exactly what the telescope's seeing. And we're not going to like edit it and stack photos and do long exposures. We're literally just going to make it the best to what we actually see on the next one. So um, we'll actually show you the camera that we're going to get and then um, show you how it works and then show how it uh, fits into the new telescopes and it should fit into all the ones that we do from now on so it'll be the same camera um, for all of the telescopes that we take so then it's kind of more accurate as far as as far as what you can actually see so um, yeah we can also we also found some other stuff like the whirlpool galaxy and oh yeah we did find the whirlpool galaxy with the binoculars yeah you but next to the whirlpool look the whirlpool galaxy there's also another galaxy next to it but you can't really see it yeah it's kind of look like kind of like a foggy foggy cloud so you can see a lot of like sky objects just just the clarity is just not going to be as good as it would be like with the telescope but they're very impressive for being binoculars and the price point to be able to get into it and also when you're using the binoculars it's a lot easier to find things up in the sky because you the field of view is way bigger than like if you were to be looking let's just say through like a telescope eyepiece so that actually makes it a lot easier if you take your time but definitely get a tripod take your time get sky map and you should be able to find some cool things so we're gonna leave you with that um, we're basically gonna be getting new telescopes in with that camera um, and then like the red uh, telescope we showed you before we'll actually make a video on that one as well but until we get that stuff going, uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.